Have you? Yes, you. Ever wanted a robot maid who can fold your clothes and clean up after you? Don't lie, we all want one. Well, that's exactly what I've been working on for the past two months, building the Exley robot at the UT Center for Autonomy. Before the video starts, you might be wondering, what makes this different from other general purpose or humanoid robots like Figure? Well, the answer is simple. This thing costs just a fraction of what those robots do and can perform most of the same tasks. And best of all, it's completely open source. That means anyone can build it and improve on it. In this video, I'll show you guys how we built it and coded it for some demos. And soon in the future, I'll show you guys how we reworked to make this design much better and how I made a simulator to do reinforcement and machine learning. First, we ordered everything from Amazon and AliExpress so we can build it for cheap. And we waited for about a week or two for the parts to arrive. Some of the major parts included a bunch of servo motors, a depth sensor camera, battery pack, screws, and many more. Most of the other things were all 3D printed, like the claws. Pretty much all of the arms and the drive base was also all 3D printed. First up was building the two arms, and basically there's a really comprehensive guide on building the entire robot that you're about to see on GitHub, so I'll also leave that down in the description. But pretty much all of the arms, like I said, was 3D printed, so all we had to do was buy six server motors, and I started attaching them together. And honestly, building the arm was pretty easy. If you've built a Lego before, it's pretty similar. You kind of just force pieces together and then put screws on afterwards. And I was able to get the arm built in around 30 minutes first try. And I even made some mistakes on the way. In the middle of the process, I realized that I probably should be putting the wires on before finishing the whole thing, which will make my life much easier. So that's what I did as well. I went on and started putting the wires on. And as you can see, I finally put the claw on and the arm is done. And I repeated the process for the second one. Next up, we attached everything together. I first built the IKEA cart that was the base of the XD robot. Then the Kiwi drivetrain. After the motors were attached, we ID'd each motor using this website. And basically what IDing a motor does is you assign each motor a specific number so you can know their location and control multiple motors. The Kiwi Drive actually used Fex Pro Omni wheels and we 3D printed custom inserts that would go into them and I screwed these M3 screws in. After seeing so much building, I bet you're sitting behind your screen right now itching to build something, but you don't know where to get your hardware from. Well, look no further than today's sponsor, JLCMC. This site is basically the Amazon Prime of mechanical parts for engineers, and it's honestly easier than ordering takeout. In fact, to show you how easy it is, I'm going to get some standoffs in less than 30 seconds. So first I'm going to go to the standoff section, then I'm going to look for the ones I want, which is the nylon X standoffs. Next, I'm going to choose my length and the thread size, and how about let's try 100. That's only $3, and I'm going to add it to my cart. And time. That's it. That's how easy it is. Anyways, thank you so much JLCMC for sponsoring this video and go check them out in the description below. Back to more building. Next, I have to do some wiring. I connected each of the motors on the drive base using these three wire connectors. And it was super annoying because these were super hard to get in. No. After some struggling, I did get the drivetrain built and I was pretty happy about it. The control boards were on each of the arms, so one of the arms controlled both the arm and the drive base, and the other one controlled cameras. Speaking of the camera and the frame, most of the frame was 3D printed, so we just snapped the camera on. And called it a day. Putting the drivetrain on honestly took much longer than I expected, because I accidentally put the motors on wrong a couple times, and also the screws we had for the motors were just so short, they could barely get into the hole. Nice. Next, I screwed the camera and mounted the arms onto the 3D printed frame. If you thought the build process was done, there are still a couple of things that we ended up doing such as moving the entire frame up because we realized that the arms didn't have enough reach. So we drilled a couple holes into the 3D print and we put the screws on from below and that was very secure. 
Next, we 3D printed these flexible grippers and we swapped them on to the claws. And then I will After the claws, I connected the cameras to my computer and made sure they were working and focused them. These will be used later for teleoperation and also for training. Next, it was finally time to run some code and see the robot take its first steps, and we were all super excited. It does a little dance here. After we got everything working and the motors to move, our next goal was teleoperation which then we needed to build these leader arms, which we would use and manipulate to then project the exact movements onto the follower ones, which we have already built. So I got to work on those. The way you built it was honestly very similar to the follower arms, except for the fact that at the very tip where the claw was, was a handle for where your hand would go. Oh yeah, if you liked the video so far, you should consider subscribing and leaving a like so you can see more of my content when I post in the future. After that, we attached the two leader arms and ran the teleoperation code. And next, it's time to actually control the arms and grab some stuff. As you can see in this video, the two follower arms matches the exact angle that the leader arm is manipulated to so that we can just move the handle around and the follow arm would follow. You might think that these hands are pretty easy to manipulate by looking at them, but they're actually super hard, so props to those surgeons out there who are using robotic hands for surgery. <laughs> Next, I got my hands onto the controller as well and tried to put this hexagon shape into these 3D printed molds to test its accuracy and you no know, I wasn't too bad at it. And before moving on to our other demos, you know we had to play with it for a little bit. Oh I got it first. Instantly, no. I got it first. Oh <laughs> it just fell. Next was finally the part where we try to make the robot fold some laundry and do some cleanup work. Although most of this was still teleoperated, that doesn't take away from the fact that even if this is programmed, it can still do this quite well. At the end of the video, finally I guess the real takeaway is that these general purpose robots aren't good enough unless you're willing to spend a fortune, and if you are, you might as well just pay for a real made 